Senator Lyons. Deputy President, and uh, we've seen this bill many times before, and what that tells us is that this government is in trouble because what we know about the Abbott government is when they're in trouble, they turn on trade unions, they turn on working Australians. And they had a shocker of a week last week. Firstly, they have a six hour meeting, a six hour caucus meeting on marriage equality and come out with exactly the same position as they went in with, except now they've got a few more disgruntled backbenchers and indeed front benches. And then at the end of the week, we find that the New South Wales branch of the Liberal Party has invited the uh, commissioner from the Royal Commission to a Liberal Party fundraiser. And no matter which way they dress it up, that is what it was. It's a Liberal Party fundraiser and the, the commissioner of the Royal Commission into Unions, which is nothing more, nothing less than a witch hunt, was invited to give the keynote address. And again, it demonstrates how out of touch the Abbott government is, because they seem to think if they keep saying it wasn't a Liberal fundraiser that somewhere someone uh, in the Australian community might believe them. But everybody has seen the, uh, the invitation. Everyone is able to read for themselves it was clearly a Liberal Party fundraiser. And I guess the other question we don't know uh, that came out today in question time, well, d you know, obviously uh, the Attorney General received an invitation. Did he pay his $80? I mean, perhaps we'll get to the, the truth of that. The other um, clear issue with the Abbott government is there's actions and there's words. And despite their words, it's their actions that really count. And we heard the Prime Minister say that work choices was dead, buried and cremated, but yet bill after bill in this place does uh, resurrect work choices in one way or another. As Senator Ludwig just pointed out, a whole raft of issues, an attack on penalty rates, an attack on superannuation, an attack on uh, cleaners' pay, an attack on the clothing trade industry to try and reform that industry. On and on it goes. Attacks on low-income super, the public sector um, bargaining in good faith, yet the Abbott government refuses to move, except, except if public servants uh, choose to take a significant reduction in their conditions, they might get uh, a few more cents in their pocket. But nobody is fooled by this. It's only the Abbott government who remains um, fooled by their own rhetoric. They need to have a good hard look at themselves. And we know that the leadership rumblings are started again. Uh, we got promised after the last leadership uh, uh, vote that good government would start from then on in. Uh, we're yet to see it. Uh, the debacle on marriage equality, the debacle on their hand-picked royal commissioner, on and on, the scandal and the dysfunction and the chaos uh, continues. And of course, this bill, the Registered Organisations Bill, is just one of many attacks on workers, uh, those who put their hand up to volunteer for um, voluntary positions within trade unions and indeed within employer organisations are under attack again. I think this is the, at least the third time this bill has come before the Senate um, with barely a change uh, to the intent of the bill. And let's just look at the background. I heard today, and we'll hear those opposite go on and on about the health services union, and it was a disgrace. There's no getting away from that. It was a disgrace. But Labor in government acted. We acted. We changed uh, the way the, that registered organisations uh, had to um, operate, and those changes are still working their way through the system. But of course, the Abbott government would have you uh, would pretend that in fact nothing changed when there were significant changes made to uh, to that bill, opposed by the ACTU and employer organisations. But nevertheless, Labor went ahead, went in government, and put those changes in place. And as I said. Many of those changes are still working their way through the system. We had um, a couple of public inquiries to this, um, into this bill, and it didn't matter if it was the Senate Legislation Committee, which the government has the numbers on, or the References Committee, where the government doesn't have 
the uh, numbers. The evidence and the conclusions were the same. Nobody believes that this legislation is necessary. No one. So in all of the submissions, whether they were from employer organisations or employee organisations, thought this was necessary. And indeed, I heard in this place today government senators saying most unions go over and above what's required under the registered orgs uh, proposals here before us today. And that's true, and we heard that in evidence. Uh, the MUA goes out with its financial statements and has meetings of its members right across the country and sits down and explains to members exactly uh, what is and what isn't in um, the financial statements of that union. But it still doesn't stop them from hum somehow saying it's some other group that need to be legislated for, some other group. But even when we have the premier uh, registered orgs, the employer organisations across the country saying this, le this is legislation that's completely unnecessary. The Abbott government nevertheless continues on. And why? Because it gives them the opportunity to try and beat up on unions. And I, I bet, you know, I'd like to, I mean, I'm not really a betting person, but I, I bet you any money you like as we lead towards the canning by election, guess what will happen? There will be union bashing. There will be questions, Dorothy Dix's to ministers about. Uh, trade unions. There'll be speeches in here about the evils of trade unions because somehow the government thinks that beating up uh, on trade unions and workers somehow increases uh, their popularity. Well, you only have to look at the opinion polls where this government, the Abbott government, is deeply unpopular. And in fact, um, the trust, the sorts of issues that uh, people would normally look to their government to support them on. Uh, they've lost the trust of Australian voters. And the Canning by-election, despite being a relatively safe uh, seat for the Liberals, will be a good test of that. And we will see in that seat uh, a swing against the government. And I'd love to unseat the government in that seat. But, but watch this space. We will see a full-on attack uh, of trade unions coming over the next few weeks. And today in this place, just as he did um, the first time he spoke on the registered org, Senator Back uh, at least didn't go as far this time as he did last time because, in the interim, I corrected him. He gave us a story uh, of the health services union of a member in Western Australia, a carer, he said in, in the first time that he got up and spoke on this matter, a carer who was a member of her trade union. And uh, Senator Back thought that trade union was the health services union, and he went on about how the money was spent. But of course, in a subsequent speech, I pointed out to Senator Back, actually the union in Western Australia is a united voice. Uh, it's not the health services union. Um, so today he told the same story again about the Eastern European member implying that she'd wasted her, um, her union contributions on this dud union, but this time he didn't situate the example in Perth and he didn't uh, mention the health services union. So he's learnt something. But you see, again, this kind of rhetoric doesn't matter if it's not true, doesn't matter if it's the wrong union, obviously all unions are the same, you know, they're all the same, they all look the same. Uh, if, if, you're a, if you're a carer in Victoria and you're a member of the Health Services Union, well, without checking his facts, he suddenly thinks, well, that, that's just the same union in Western Australia, which of course it isn't. And for a senator who prides himself on Western Australia, we often hear the West Australian stories, and yes, he seems to know so much. He certainly, he certainly couldn't get it right on which union carers who work in nursing homes in Western Australia belong to. Well, it's United Voice. So, of course, that story discredited the first time I corrected the record, still used the second time to somehow paint uh, unions and low-income workers in a bad light. And that story is completely wrong. Uh, and I listened very carefully today. And, of course, we've since, since between now and the last um, time this bill was presented, We've now got the disgraceful Commissioner Hayden affair. You know, if anybody needs checking, it's those opposite in who they appoint and how they get there 
and how royal commissions are being used as nothing but witch hunts against unions. And, and to, to allow him, the commissioner, to continue in that role is an absolute disgrace. And nobody, nobody could take seriously the, um, the reports, either the interim report of the Royal Commission or any future reports, when it's presided over by a Royal Commissioner who thought it was OK to attend a uh, Liberal fundraiser. He, he thought Order. it was OK. So um, this bill, uh, this one, the Fair Work Registered Organisation Amendment Bill, of course, is exactly the same as the bill that was presented a few months ago. Um, and the explanatory memorandum to the current bill doesn't materially differ from the explanatory memorandum of the previous bill. And it doesn't contain any additional information provided by the minister in relation to the matters raised by the Labor senators of the committee. So even though, again, the arrogance of those opposite, so even though we raised Labor senators uh, in our report raised particular concerns, did the minister or the government bother to take the couple of months between the presentation of the bill today and a couple of months ago to try and address those concerns? No, of course they didn't. They just, in their usual arrogance, roll up here and try and again say to the Senate, yep, same bill, we just want you to vote a different way this time. Well, what, what do they think? What's changed? What's changed? I haven't heard employer organisations out there saying, oh, we've got to have this bill, we've got to have this legislation in place, we've got to be held even more accountable, we have to be compared to a corporation when we're not. When we're not. There are fundamental differences there that, again, demonstrates the Abbott government uh, certainly don't understand trade unions, but even more so they don't understand registered organisations. Because in the main, in trade unions and in registered organisations, most of the office bearers are, are volunteers. And in the case of my union, United Voice, very few, very few of the elected positions are paid positions. Most of them, the, the branch councillors, the treasurers, the presidents, the deputy presidents and so on, are all volunteers who give up their time uh, away from their families, who sometimes take time off work, to attend union meetings, to be part of the running of, of, of the trade union. And that applies to all trade unions. Very few, very few of the positions uh, within trade unions are paid. And the same we heard in evidence for registered organisations. In fact, we heard much more difficult for them where they're running perhaps a regional group. Uh, you think the National Party would be trying to look after them, but we know the National Party have well and truly deserted the bush. All of the things they've agreed to in this place uh, shows that they're certainly, if they ever were a party of the bush, they've well and truly left that behind. Where you might have the secretary, the president, and the, uh, and the committee of an employer organisation, all voluntary. And yet the Abbott government, without blinking, wants to just apply extremely onerous uh, reporting obligations onto organisations, and further than that, it wants to fine them if they get it wrong. So I would suspect, as the employer organisations told us in evidence, that in the future, if this uh, registered orgs ledge gets through, they'll have trouble filling those positions. And employer organisations, along with unions, provide a really important role in our community. They can moderate the behaviour of some employers who go beyond the pale because they usually uh, can be impartial and they'll have the facts and figures at their disposal. But no, the Abbott government just wants to tear that to shreds. Again, we've seen this blatant disregard uh, by the Abbott government of those who volunteer in our community. We've seen that, whether it's in the environment, with our environment groups that have just been uh, run over by uh, the Green Army, whether it's this legislation where we just want to bowl over more volunteers in our community and put such onerous obligations onto them. Uh, that they will just simply not put their hand up. They'll be too scared to. And perhaps that's part of the Abbott's agenda, is to scare these volunteers, 
so that they don't put their hand up for trade unions uh, work and they, and they won't put their hand up to be uh, volunteers for employer organisations because that is where this legislation um, is heading. It's treating corporations and uh, unions. It's, sorry, it's re it's referring to employer organisations and unions as corporations, which of course they are not. They are not making profits. Uh, they are not returning a dividend to shareholders. Um, that is not what either of those groups do, and yet that is how the Abbott government wants to treat these groups who do a really valuable job uh, in the community. The Scrutiny of Bills Committee too raised issues uh, with this bill, and in, in its fifth report of 2015 it drew attention to a number of issues uh, that it believed were insufficiently dealt with in the explanatory memorandum. And in particular, the Scrutiny of Bills Committee noted its disappointment with the minister's failure to address these issues for a third time. So we have to ask ourselves, is the government genuine in when it says it wants to listen and respond? If, if a bill doesn't get up the first time, okay, you might think, well, you know, we'll have another go. But when it doesn't get up the second time and you and then you present it a third time and you make no changes at all and you don't even respond to issues raised by either our reports as Labor senators or the scrutiny of Bill's report, then seriously you have to question you would have to question the motives of the Abbott government in pursuing legislation like this. You would really have to question what their motives are. And their motives are they want to continue to bash unions. They want to be able to stand up and say, despite Labor moving legislation, which already covers off on employer organisations and unions, which requires uh, officers to be trained, which requires a lot more reporting um, and a lot more transparency, this goes way too far. And again, it says you are guilty uh, unless um, you know, we, we think you're all guilty, and that's why we need this uh, legislation to hold you all to account. When we have legislation in place at the moment, which is perfectly adequate. But did the Abbott government do any kind of review of that legislation? No, of course they didn't. Of course they didn't, because again their arrogance got in the way, and they thought, no, let's just put this on our list of how to demonise trade unions, and it's not working for them. It is not working for them. Uh, they only have to look at the polls and the disunity and the chaos in their own party to see that these type of bills are not working for them. And this, again, Labor won't be supporting uh, this bill because the government simply hasn't listened. It hasn't listened to one single word we've said in opposition uh, to this bill. Because we put the first lot of legislation in place. Now you might think it stands to reason that perhaps we might be prepared to have a look and say, "Oh, yep, agree. We, we missed that. Yep, that's a, that's a good reform." But of course, no, they haven't done that. They've not taken on one single suggestion made by Labor. They certainly ignored the scrutiny of Bills Committee. So why is this government continuing along this way? Because its actions speak louder than its words, and we know that work choices is far from dead and buried. This is all work choices under another name. It is work choices by stealth, by putting this bill up, by putting up the ABCC, by putting up the low income super, by knocking off cleaners' pay, by uh, refusing to bargain in good faith in the public sector. On and on it goes by not giving one skerrick of compassion to the Hutchinson port workers uh, who perhaps are still facing the sack uh, come August 31. This government has clearly shown it doesn't care one uh, bit about workers. It certainly uh, doesn't support trade unions and it doesn't even support employer organisations. And Labor uh, will continue to speak out against uh, bills like this, 
and we will continue to oppose them in this place. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President.